Let me at him! Well, there it is. Hello and welcome back to the fourth game in this best of seven matchup between Inquisitive Hawk and MXM Foggy. So, Human versus Night Elf. It's been quite a series of games so far. Both players really going to town, trying their best to win this because there are 2,000 or 2,500 rubles on the line. Rubies? Rubies? Either way, whatever they are, the players want them. Oh, look at this layout. This is an interesting layout. So Foggy places Ancient of War down. He places down a moon well, and then he shift clicks to build another moon well once this moon well has finished. So we can pretty much clearly tell that Foggy is going to be going on Tavern Hero because... Uh, Otherwise, he's going to have a very late Warden or Demon Hunter. So, yes. He'll be going to Tavern Hero, and I suspect it's a Beastmaster. But, it might be a Goblin Tinker. Really, Night Elf are quite flexible in terms of what heroes they can go, because of the Moon Wells. The Moon Wells help to sort of, you know, obviously give you mana and health back. And they're really flexible in that sense, because they work with any hero. And Night Elf, just their army composition... They're mostly range, and even the bears, for example, are support. They're like druids. They're support. They heal, so they work on pretty much any hero. You don't have to have a night elf hero to justify going uh, bears or whatever. And not to mention night elf also like mercenary units. So I imagine to see a lot of troll berserkers, a lot of troll shadow priests. That's a nice little pullback there. It's a very far pullback, but the reason why is so he's distracting these creeps, and meanwhile he's going to pick up the Shadow Troll Priest, and then place the Wisp at the back here, so he's got access there. Hawk actually has gone Mountain King for his first hero, and he's stepping in here with five militia and a couple of footmen, getting a scout tower at the back, and we're going to see how he's going to approach this. So he runs back a little bit, sends in his militia, he's going to be going for the Renegade Wizard first, but that's a little bit of a tricky position. He's going for the Tunnelers, actually. I'm surprised he's not taking down the Geomancer. But each to their own. Anyway, Shadow Troll Priest there for Hawk. He's always worth getting. It's a very cheap two-food unit, generally. 195 gold, I suppose, isn't too cheap. It's like 195 gold and 10 or 20 wood, but... It's 200 food, uh, 200 mana. Starts off with, I think, 200 mana. It does have Abolish Magic. I think it's a bit overkill and necessary to use Abolish Magic sometimes early on in the game. Foggy going for Dark Ranger. I only just picked up on that fact. So that was the neutral hero. So he actually went for Dark Ranger first as well. Which can be very useful versus human. Maybe he wants a short game. Maybe he wants to mess up these skeletons and deny any potential expansions from Hawk. Because when you're harassing with a... Dark Ranger in basically, you know, first is a lot of human peasants and such. You know, you can get a lot of skeletons and outmass your opponent that way. And he's also got access to mercs here. But it's not easy to get the mercs now because that creep camp is still alive. And he's using a really good job here. The, the great thing with the Dark Ranger is with a few units, you can creep pretty much the entire map because. On a map like this, there's quite a few weaker units, lower health units, which means that he can really get a stupid amount of these lesser dark minions and creep stuff incredibly quickly. And you can see the hot spots he's going for. He's not worrying so much with the tougher creep spots like these, which have a lot more health. He's going to the little murlocs with only a little bit of health. And not to mention, this is a smart idea because Foggy might be suspecting that his opponent is going to be expanding which most humans tend to do. So if he takes out this creep camp, not only does he get experience, not only does he get items, not only does he get more dark minions, he's straight up next to where his opponent is expanding, and he's going to have ma as much life as he possibly can do from these skeletal minions. <laughs> this hawk, Shadow Priest, what is it doing? He's like scouting around, he's like, what am I doing? No, oh, I'm becoming another skeletal da lesser dark minion. No one cares about this time of strength. Maybe the Mountain King does. Oh, Foggy's going to lose his Troll Berserker here. That's a that's a nasty little loss there. And Inquisitive Hawk has a 
Joel Berserker of his own. Foggy's got so many lesser dark minions. He's got so many of them, and he really wants to take out these peasants. Is anyone going to get any neutral hero, uh, neutral mercenaries from here? Yes, Hawk picking up another Shadow Troll Priest. He's going to try to use Abolished Magic, pick off any sort of... Uh, Peasants he can and get a couple of heals in. Anything he can do to help himself. And he's actually in a good spot here because he's got a whole load of militia here that are actually stepping in here to flank and do some amazing damage. So really, that backfired a lot for Hofoggy there. He played that pretty much as he should have done. But because of the position he led himself into after chasing down the peasants that Hawk basically kited him into, it meant that the rest of his peasants in his base could conform... Conf uh, convert to a militia and then come and defend. So that's pretty good job there by Hawk. Very on the ball there, using his intelligence strategy to help him deal with the overwhelming mass that he wouldn't really be able to use his micro versus. Maybe I could learn something there, who knows. Foggy currently sitting at level 3 with the Dark Ranger. Gloves of Haste and Cl Claws of Attack plus 6. Very good items there for the Dark Ranger. I Means she'll be able to keep on top of trying to get those dark minions out. <laughs> Entangled goldmine being denied slightly. It does look like the troll berserker is the first one to be targeted when possible. And we can see silence being used by the dark ranger to deny any sort of storm bolts. But there it is. Doesn't deny it for long enough. Storm bolt is almost a guaranteed kill on an archer because they have so little health. Even at like a level 2 storm bolt. Boom. No, there's a lovely little block there from Foggy. But there will... Oh no. He's not going to go back and Stormbolt it. He's still dealing with this. He wants a healthy archer. He wants a fresh one. Why not? That's the right thing to do. Footman stepping back in here. Trying to do some extra damage to the archers. Archers taking a lot of damage from the normal uh, melee damage that the, the Footman do. Now this Mountain King has shite loads of mana. He still has one Stormbolt left in him. Okay, scrap that. He doesn't have any more storm bolts left in him. At least not for the immediate moment, because of that wisp detonate. Now, meanwhile, Haw a Foggy has been harassing with these uh, dark minions, sending them over to the uh, Hawks expansion. So that's a really good job there, but he hasn't quite... No, there we go, he gets one. No, does he get one? No, he doesn't. Ah, oh, almost. Nice try. Hawk is really picking off these archers left, right and centre. Level 4 Mountain King. Those archers are feeding him like mad. This is why Night Elf do tend to get a lot of Huntress versus uh, human players. Because archers, unfortunately, are pretty vulnerable to Footman and obviously a Mountain King at that. But Footman are also vulnerable to the Dark Ranger. And here we go. Dark Minion, 15 to 17 damage, slow. Footman. Not too far off of Footman, basically. They're like a bad-ish ghoul. Basically like a ghoul, a dark minion is. That's the level 2 version of uh, Black Arrow. But we can see that uh, peasants are very vulnerable to them because they have medium armor. They take extra damage. And these dark minions are really being chased down at the moment. Uh, really chasing down these footmen. But the slow there from the mud golem denies a couple of potential kills on these footmen. But these footmen stepping back into potential damage there. But luckily... Foggy is stepping away, which means that these footmen will live, and they will live a little bit longer because they're benefiting from the scroll of regeneration. We've got a nice little merc army. In fact, I think there's possibly more mercs for the human player than there are for the night elf player, which is obviously quite funny to see. We've got double ancient of lore being created by Foggy, and Hawk is taking out an ancient of wonders, which might be able to get a cheeky couple of hits here. Deny the uh, scroll of regeneration. Yes, it looks like it. Yep, there you go. Does he do it on that one? No, he doesn't quite do it on that one. Shame. So, Foggy, in a little bit of trouble here. He's only got a few archers. It's a couple of archers. Huntress. Dark Ranger level 3. Oh, look, no, there's more now. Oh, there we go. He actually picked up some more mercenaries. There we go. That's, an, that's a Night Elf army right there. Two mercenary tavern heroes and mostly mercs in his army composition. But Hawk is really on top of it this game. If he could get level 5 Mountain King, he could probably seal the deal. Seal the victory right here because uh, he's got a powerful army. That Mountain King's only getting stronger. He's got a clarity pot as well to keep that mana going in. Uh, Scroll of Beasts, is he going to sell it? Yes. Is he going to pick anything from the marketplace? It doesn't look like he is. Ring of Regeneration is really nice for the Mountain King as well. So Inquisitive Hawk's got quite a bit of gold here. He's only got 11k gold left. 
Although Foggy's not far behind. We've got to get these skeletal minions coming through. Pendant of Energy, a very, very, very nice item there. Probably passing that over to the Dark Ranger, I imagine. Tinker can be very good versus human. With constant harass, with Pocket Factory. So the game goes on long enough, I think that Night Elf can potentially sort of destroy the economy of the human and win sort of the macro game. But it's up to Inquisitive Hawk here to get that level 5 on the Mountain King, which he might shortly be able to do if he could just turn around maybe every now and then, pick off a dark minion, and that way he'd seal the deal. Well, look, he's got two scrolls of healing there. That's kind of overkill, especially since he doesn't have a huge army. All the Archmages here coming to steal away the experience from the Mountain King, but the Mountain King is still going to get his level 5. He might even get a kill on this freaking Ogre Mauler, which he really doesn't want to lose, old Foggy. Yes, level 5 Mountain King. There might be a surround there. He's trying to get a surround, but even if he did, I don't think it's going to be enough to stop the Mountain King. Mountain King is just going to be throwing enough, at least another couple of um, Storm Bolts. That is a beautiful surround there from Foggy using the Pocket Factory. The Skeletal Minions. Mountain King using the Scroll of Healing just to stay alive a little bit longer, but having to definitely use the Scroll of Town Portal to escape his imminent death. So that was a really, really good job there by Foggy. He really needed to do that. If he didn't get the surround there, that would have been a lot more one-sided. But he did. He cost Hawk there a scroll of healing plus a scroll of teleport. So that was a really, really good job there from Foggy. I've got to give him huge credit for that. And he obviously did a lot of bonus damage to the Mountain King because he had him surrounded. So he got maximum damage to the Mountain King for minimum damage taken. So that really allows Foggy to step back into this game because up until this point, I figured that the Mountain King, especially since he was about to hit level 5, pretty much had taken it. But... It's a bit more closer now. But Hawk does have a really good army here. That's a really good time in the uh, scout here from the uh, Wisp, who's going to detonate on all of that. So he's going to do some good damage to the mana. Let's have a look at Hawk. 59 food, 400 gold, 300 wood, 60 food for Foggy, 440 gold, 260 wood. Let's have a look at the heroes. We've got Hawk, who has only a circuit of nobility in his Archmage, level 2. So he's got Water Elementals and Brilliance Aura. Mountain King, level 3 Stormbolt, level 2 Bash. He's got Ring of Regeneration, circuit of nobility, Boots of Speed, and Scroll of Healing. Might pick up something else. Probably going to get more Clarity Pots. He just really wants loads of mana for that Mountain King. And meanwhile, Foggy has... Dark Ranger at level 4, Glass of Haze, Club Wars of Attack, plus 6, Pendant of Energy, and Scroll of Healing. Tinker with the Potion of Healing plus, well, not plus 2, why was I going to say plus 2? And Staff of Preservation. Oh, a nice little gank here. He's got a mix of Dryads, he's got some Merc, Goblin, um, uh, so sorry, some Troll Creeps. And he's picking up some more from the mercenary camp nearby. Tinker taking a lot of damage, but that potion of healing coming in very handy, which means that he's just tanking damage. Mortar team doing some decent damage to the uh, Dryads there, trying to pick stuff off. Looks like Hawk's being backed off into a corner here. He's now suffering a lot of silence effects there from the Dark Ranger there. But the Mountain King is free to throw down Stormbolt, so he might be able to secure a kill here on the Goblin Tinker in a moment. Yes, down goes the Goblin Tinker. Which leaves the Dark Ranger, who is at full health though. Militia coming in here for a Hawk. We can see that they're going to help fend off this attack. Foggy currently sitting at 58 food versus Hawk's 61 food. So really Hawk is still in a good spot. And the Mortar's at the back of the base being protected by the towers here. Doing some decent damage to the Dryads who are having a really tough time. There's a lot of skeletal Dark Minions that are really focusing heavily on this Mountain King. But he's still such a beast it might not be too easy to pick him off. He's got possibly just enough mana for one more Storm Bolt. He really needs to get back to the shop. Foggy really trying his hardest there to block off that Mountain King, but the Mortar Team picking off that freaking Dryad so the Mountain King can get back to the shop, picking up a Potion of Healing and retreating back to the Towers, which means that the Mountain King is going to stay alive. Hawk did everything he could there to keep that Mountain King alive, and Foggy did everything he could there to try to stop him. But unfortunately for Foggy... Will the Storm Bolt be enough? He might not even need it. A Bash proc at the end there. Picks off the Dark Ranger. Hawk with his Spellbreakers. And double hero. Oh, there. Yeah. Very, very good. Very good. Hawk just about managed to stay in there. That Mountain King really came through there. That's a risky move to go Mountain King first. But it paid off. Paid off big time. 
So thank you very much for in, uh, watching the fourth game of this series. I will be continuing continuing the uh, series over the next couple of days on the channel, which you can find www.youtube.com slash witty warcraft, or I'm streaming at twitch.tv slash witty. And subscribe, like, the comment. Uh, well, subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, share the video with your friends, and uh, take care. I'll see you later.